Hello and welcome to a designated driver video with a difference. This time I'm not talking about mental health issues, I'm solving those issues with the wonderful BMW M2 competition 2020. Whew, what a corker, stay tuned. So, we're in a BMW M2. This belongs to a friend of mine, a very generous one, and um, he's helping me realize uh, a dream that I've had for many years. So this is my attempt at doing kind of a car review because frankly, I don't want to get too technical with people. That's kind of what bores non-car people about cars. It can all get a little bit nerdy. I have to say, I'm actually very, very happy indeed that this car has a real handbrake. Um, especially modern cars have these awful electronic handbrakes I mean really they do the same job but anyone who likes to drive or knows about cars probably agree with me there's nothing wrong with the handle I really like that and what is it what is it about driving that just keeps me occupied and focused I don't have to I don't have to think about what happened yesterday. I don't have to think about what's happening tomorrow. I just need to concentrate on what's going on in front of me. So, you know, for all intents and purposes, it doesn't really matter what car I'm in, really. But then it does, it does, it does matter. <laughs> There's just something about it, you know, it's, it's, it's primal, it's primal. You could do this in your Nissan Micra if you want, or I could do it in my Passat, where I usually do my uh, videos. But it wouldn't be anywhere near as much fun as this. I'm kind of a fan of BMW. I think they may have lost their way uh, fairly recently in, um, in terms of design, and I'm certainly not alone there in thinking uh, that way. But um, this little baby is just beautiful. It's sublime, and it's a car that someone like myself would never own. Uh, simply, uh, well firstly, don't have enough money, <laughs> and secondly, even if I did, I've got two children, a dog and a wife, so uh, yeah, not, not much use with the two doors, and I'm not entirely sure you'd get anything other than my three-year-old in the back of this thing, but it's not what it's about. And uh, you may or may not know that the M2 could be specced with a manual gearbox, and as far as I'm concerned, with the way things that are going in the car world these days, electrification, automation, all this kind of stuff, I want as much visceral pleasure as I can get my greasy little hands on. So I would love a clutch and a gearbox. But um, that's not to say that the, um, the gearbox on this car isn't, it's just super fast. I've driven a few cars with flappy paddle gearboxes, as they call them, and they're a bit, yeah, it's slow, but this one isn't. And actually, I can change the ferocity of the gear change. Um, and I think I'm on, I'm actually on number two at the moment out of three. It's really no need for it to be any faster than that. You know, I'm not on track. I'm not tearing around like a lunatic. I really don't feel the necessity on this uh, fairly bumpy B road to to have anything more than I have right now. It's, uh, it's just about right. It doesn't ride that hard. Um, I expected it to ride harder, even, even in this comfort mode. I think, I think it would just be silly to put this in anything other than comfort, especially and particularly on this bit of road. I will say one thing is that uh, even with uh, the suspension in comfort mode, these extremely wide tyres do track from side to side. The front of the car does get moved side to side quite easily so you've got to be on the money you've got to be on the ball but you know that's what we love although the v8 and v10 engines in previous m cars are quite rightly the stuff of legend i strongly believe that the three liter straight six in the m2 is a rite of passage for the discerning bmw owner it produces a sound that is synonymous with BMW and is so satisfying as it thrusts its way to the 7,600 RPM redline. This unit produces 405 horsepower or 410 PS and packs 406 foot-pounds of torque. That's plenty to be getting on with. 
A surprising amount of space can be found in the boot, making this relatively small car more practical than you may imagine. Where the M2 falls short for me is the interior and cabin space. It's just a little underwhelming, even if tactile and functional. The seats are comfortable and supportive, but fail to set my man senses tingling like their Audi RS range cousins. On the whole, the M2 is beautifully proportioned, and as M3s of late have become larger and more practical with four doors, some might say the M2 is more M3 than the M3. For those of you who have been watching my other designated driver videos about my mental health issues, um, my battles with uh, addiction and such, um, you know, I want to tell you that watching car programs over and over again, new ones, old ones, just being uh, submersed in that, in that scene has been a source of joy for me and a source of happiness. I, I'm sorry, it just keeps me happy, you know. And to actually be in a, a, a car like this, which is 400 plus brake horsepower, it's just incredible whether you use it or not. It's, uh, yeah, like I said, it's primal. I can't explain it. If I, if I really try and think about it, it doesn't make a great deal of sense. None of it really makes a great deal of sense. You can only do 60 miles an hour legally in this country. Most of the time you're sat behind something doing 40 or even less a tractor or something. So what's the point? I don't really know. All I know is how, I'm, how this makes me feel to be in this thing. Also, if I go back to um, before I could drive, all I wanted to do was adventure, to, to, to travel and go as far as I could and just, you know, discover things. And if it's only driving through the small village like this one, this is Houghton. This town, this little village is idyllic. There's a, a little Tudor house we've just gone past there. I'm not sure if the camera picks that up or not. Stunning, absolutely stunning. This place is beautiful. It does have some strange parking laws. I'm amazed that that's legal to park there, but you just have to be careful. Slow, slow, slow. Watch where you're going, young man. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm just going past a pub here called the Jolly Butchers, and this is where um, my mother and father uh, played competition archery, of all things, in the 80s. I had a little go at myself. Not bad with a bow and arrow, me. <clears throat> wow. So this particular journey is... Uh, it's bringing back some memories, you know, I'm going to somewhere I haven't been for a very long time. It's bringing back some great memories, I'm seeing some fantastic scenery. You know, yeah, okay, again, you can do this in your, in your little, uh, I don't know, Opal Corsa or whatever. That's fine. Um, and yeah, you should do it. Uh, I'm all for leisure driving, you know. I, I, un I understand completely that cars need to be reined in and um, the electrification of cars is a must. Um, but for the meantime, and for as long as possible, I will remain in the cockpit of this mad beast that I'm in, just knowing that I'm in control of this thing. I guess, I guess that there is a bit of, uh, an, a little bit of, um, control freak coming out, you know, to control the uncontrollable. car up <clears throat> as best I can is that you know it's what we used to call a pocket rocket you know it's nice to be in a car that it seems to be the right size everything seems to be so big and so heavy these days and I have to say <clears throat> I can see everything you know it's, it's, it's the A pillars are absolutely fine I see out the back very well it's uh, a, a lot more practical if, of course, there's only two of you. I really don't think uh, you want four adults in this car. Um, but it's, it's, it's extremely manageable. I'm sat in, you know, automatic at the moment, just poodling along. And um, it's not scary in the slightest. 
it's just been a fantastic day with this little thing you know I've had to thread it through a few needles going through uh, villages trucks coming the other way you're always conscious that these wheels are going to get damaged quite easily if you if you hit one of these on a curb I imagine it's going to cost quite a lot of money but um, it's very sticky I've had wet weather I've had dry weather and uh, not at any point did I ever feel that this car was ever going to let go yeah, I just feel great. I've had a fantastic day and uh, I wasted a lot of my life and a lot of my money on alcohol as uh, those of you who have watched my previous videos know and uh, when I think of how much I spent on alcohol, something that I never really enjoyed, certainly not for very long, maybe I could have afforded something like this or something along these lines. And um, you know, I don't do regret. It's not a, it's not one thing. It's not a thing that I really do. But I'm a little sad that I've wasted pretty much 20 years sitting in bars and drinking myself into depression and all the other mental issues that I've given myself. When just driving like this in something like this, if only for a few hours, has just been an absolute joy. Um, this has been the stuff of dreams for me. I thank the owner of this car like a million times over. What a man. Not only has he lent me his car, he was also the chap who told me that I had to throw in the towel and go and seek help. So uh, thank you very much. He doesn't want his name mentioned, that's fine. But thank you. Thank you so very, very much. And uh, BMW, wow. What a car. As I said, I could really do with the clutch and gears. I mean, it wouldn't make me any faster. This thing changes gear far quicker than a human being ever could, but it would be nice to, um, to have all those things. To, to me, a car with no clutch, no gears, no noise, for example, an electric car, is like having a girlfriend without the naughty bits. <laughs> if anybody trusts me, and is feeling generous enough to lend me the keys to their exotic car, their classic car, their, their pride and joy, or just something they would like to share with someone like-minded, someone who loves these things as much as I do. I adore these things, and I'm really very, very sad that I've missed the opportunity in the last 20 years to do more with them. And I'm also very sad that in around nine years time, None of these things will be made anymore. So um, the more experience and time I can get, there's a guy in another M2 there, just put his hand up. The more experience I can get um, with these cars, I would be eternally grateful, eternally grateful. So if even if you don't own one yourself, you know someone who might be interested in me doing some little videos, some little reviews, just having a chat, having a look around the car. Um, yeah, let me know, please let me know, and I will leave uh, all the details you need to, to, to send me a message or anything in the comment section below or in the bio, whichever. And uh, thank you so much for watching uh, this episode of Designated Driver. It's, um, as I said, it's a dream. It's, it's, it's decades old, this dream. Um, and who gets to realize any of their dreams? So I'm extraordinarily grateful and very, very happy. I'm trying not to smile too much because it's uh, it's kind of desperate. <laughs> but no, what an experience! What an experience! Thank you so much. Thank you. All the best. See you in the next videos. Ciao for now. Oh, and don't forget like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all that stuff because, um, yeah, I need that stuff. I need that stuff to push it further on into the algorithm and so on and so forth get more attention yeah. um, take care guys bye bye You know what? Forget what I said earlier. I'm sitting in the back of this thing with the uh, yeah, with the seat in the same position it was when I was driving. Do you know what? It's not bad. It's really not bad. 
I take it all back. Sorry, BMW. Love you. Mwah.